Okay, so we have a bivariate probability distribution here. We have the variables x and y. x takes the values 0, 1, and 2, and y takes the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. And here in the cells here, we have the joint probabilities of each. Okay, now the first question asks us to find the probability, find the value of k. Okay, so essentially what we have to do here is we have to find a calculate all the marginal probabilities, okay? Now you can pick one or the other. I've actually done it for both here. But essentially add up a row and add up a or a column, but just do all of them, all the rows or all the columns, okay? So in this case we have k plus 6k plus 9k plus 4k, that gives us 20k. Likewise down here we would get 40k and then 20k. And if we add all of those up, that is 80k. Now 80k has to equal to 1, so necessarily k is equal to 1 over 80, okay? So that is the answer essentially, okay? Now, you may be asked also to calculate the marginal probabilities. Uh, it's not a part of this question here, but that is essentially 20 over 80, which is 1 quarter, okay? So, Part B, oh yeah, sorry, obtain the marginal uh, distributions of X and Y. So I got a little bit ahead of myself there, but essentially add them all up, okay? So we have 80K here, or sorry, 10K, which is actually 10 over 80, which is 1, eight, one over 8, 30K over, 30 over 80 actually, and that is equal to three over eight, okay? So essentially you have to do it for all of the columns and all of the rows, like that, okay. So that's the second one down there. So I just give you the answers there straight away so you can have a look at that. So I was, I was wondering, would that question pop up? I was expecting it to. Now, find the conditional pro distribution of X given that Y is equal to two, okay? So let's go back here a second. Essentially what we are doing here is we are looking at the conditional distribution of X given that Y is equal to two. Actually, let's just check that there. So essentially what we're doing here is we're focusing on this column very much specifically, okay? So uh, it's the, the probabilities there, the, the joint probabilities would be, sorry, 9 over 80, uh, 12 over 80, and 9 over 80. And I think that to totals to 30 over 80, okay? So, the there we go. So it's essentially for X, equal x given that y is equal to 2, we use the conditional probability formula here, okay? So this is the joint probability here, the ones I've just called out, uh, for example, 9 over 80, 12 over 80, and 9 over 80, okay? So it's a little bit hard to tell there, but I'll, I'll do one of these specifically, uh, 9 over 80, okay? This is for x equal to zero, okay? And divide that by the probability of y equal to two, which is consistent for the all three of them, which is 30 over 80. And does that works out to be equal to nine over 30, which is 0 0.3. Likewise, the other ones are 0 0.4 and 0 0.3, okay? So it's a conditional probability formula. So essentially, you might be able to tell that f directly from the relative proportions between 9 over 80, 12 over 80, and 9 over 80, and sort of rationalize it like that, okay? But, you know, this shows your workings and shows your understanding of the conditional, conditional probability formula as well, which is important. It's demonstrating your understanding. Okay, now, this one here is calculate the correlation coefficient between x and y, okay? Now, usually what I might ask is to ask you to find the, or the expected value of X and the expected value of Y. In this case, I'll sort of skip past it. It's, they're fairly simple. Once you get used to these, you might sort of even be able to tell automatically what they should be. So the expected value of X is equal to one and the expected value of Y is equal to 1.5. 
Now I'll go into these uh, calculations in a bit more detail in other videos. So for this, just for the sake of simplicity, I will leave it uh, alone in this particular instance. Okay. Now, so what we have to do here is calculate the distribution of x times y. So that's the multiple of x multiplied by y for each of the possible pairings of x and y. Okay. So here we have x equal to 0, y is equal to 0. In fact, every single thing in this column is going to be 0. 0, 0, 0. Okay. Likewise, 0, 0, 0 here because we're multiplying by x equals 0. Okay. So everything here, when you multiply the product of x and y on this, on, the, on this row in this column, will turn out to be equal to 0. Okay. And if you add them all up, 1 over 80, 8 over 80, 1 over 80, 6 over 80, 9 over 80, 4 over 80. What happens is we total, it totals up to be 29 over 80. So this is our goal here. Our immediate goal is to calculate this distribution of the multiples okay, of x and y. So uh, one uh, x times y is equal to 1, where there's only one instance where that happens. It's here. So that's 18 over 80, okay? So that turns out turns up here. Two, so we have this one here and this one here, and that turns out, gives us a total probability that the product is equal to two of 18 over 80. And so on, you go the whole way through here. So it's essentially just make sure you have all of these multiples checked out, okay? So yeah, that's it. So essentially generate this table here. It's sort of like the marginal table that we looked at earlier on, okay? Now, we're gonna use the expected value of x times y, okay? So it's the product uh, of the each outcome, each product outcome, and multiply that by the probability of that outcome, okay? So, and add them all up. So it's a straightforward expected value problem. This value here, multiplied by this value here, plus this value here, multiplied by that value there, and so on. So that works out to be 120 over 80, which is equal to 1.5. Okay, now we're gonna use that to calculate the correlation coefficient. This is a good bit of work in this. So first off, the covariance, the correlation co uh, coefficient, but well, we need to find the covariance first, okay, which is part of the finding the correlation coefficient. Now. This is a, there's actually a good bit of work in this. So essentially, this is the formula to find the covariance, okay? And the covariance here is the expected value of the product of x and y minus the product of the expected value of x times <coughs> the expected value of y. This works out to be zero, so necessarily the correlation coefficient is going to be zero, okay? Now, uh, just to sort of be clear about that, correlation of x and y would be the covariance of x and y divided by the variance of, or sorry, the square root of the variance of x and the very times the variance of y. Okay. Now we already know that this is going to be zero, but if if it wasn't zero, what we'd have to do is calculate the expected value of x and the expected value of y as well, which is a good bit of work. So in this particular video, it's shorter than usual. In other videos, there's a lot of work in this. This would be non-zero. There'd be a few more calculations here. But in this particular instance, we can just stop here because this is zero. That means the whole thing is zero. Okay? So that's it, really. That In, that, in this particular instance, it was fairly easy. Okay, now, state with a reason whether or not x and y are independent. Okay, zero correlation is not sufficient. Don't jump in there, okay? Essentially, what you have to do is look through it there, okay? And be very thorough with it. So, there's 12 of these possible uh, pairings of cells, x and y. So, essentially, the each individual probability is must be the product of its two, uh, the joint probability, Um, must be the 
product of its two marginal probabilities, okay? So, and then uh, you'll actually sort of check through here. That should be multiplied by there, actually. This is LaTeX, a LaTeX error. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to check through our table back here. Let's go a bit back. And we're going to sort of look at this here. So we'll just pick x equal to zero, y is equal to zero, okay? It's easy to prove it's not independent. It's tough to prove it is independent. So the probability of x equal to zero is one quarter, okay? This is uh, 20 over 80, which is one quarter. This is one eighth, the probability of y equal to zero. Oops, there we go. But the probability of x equal to zero and y equal to zero is one over 80, okay? So that is not, that disqualifies it as being independent. So it's not equal to one over 80. Okay, in the, with this regard to this particular cell, it's one over thirty-two. You can tell, but at the end, the fact that it's not equal one over eighty means that x and y are not independent. So is that it? That's it. Yeah, we'll leave it there.